Alright YouTube, how you guys doing today? Welcome to week 8 of Apple Weekly. Got a number of stories this week. Hopefully you guys can leave a comment where you perhaps agree with me, where you disagree with me. You think I'm talking absolutely or at my backside, you know. Leave a comment where you think is appropriate. Uh, the first story of this week is in relation to the new Apple TV which is due to be released sometime end of this month. There are reports coming out or confirmations coming out that Apple TV, the new Apple TV, shares the same iOS coding as the iPod Touch, the iPhone and the iPad, which in essence suggests that the Apple TV uh, will get an App Store. Now, if you guys remember the launch of the iPhone uh, back a few years ago, three or four years ago, when the first generation iPhone was launched, there was no App Store to go with it for a full year. Um, so if the Apple TV were to go down this line, then it doesn't mean because it doesn't launch off with an App Store, it can still you know, inevitably get an app store, due, you know, with a software update perhaps uh, later down the line, which would be very interesting because Apple uh, has said, uh, you know, the Apple TV is a hobby. I still don't see this as a full wow factor for your t uh, living room, although it is making or going in the right footsteps. Is it, you know, totally wow? Is it totally there? No, it isn't. Um, can the app store save Apple TV? Uh, perhaps. Uh, I mean, I don't know how they're going to do it or why someone would want to download apps onto this or what kind of apps are going to be targeted to this new Apple TV. And if, you know, we still don't know if the Apple TV has onboard storage, which we will find out because once the Apple TVs start getting shipped to customers, people are going to start opening them up, seeing, you know, is there a small uh, SD card in there? Is there a small storage in there that Apple didn't mention? You know, Engadget. Uh, they were quite right enough. They pretty much said the price point is going to be really low, $99. And hey, Apple done that. The only two rumours that Engadget reported that weren't true, uh, Engadget said the Apple TV will be renamed iTV. But hey, that could be a last minute thing due to the copyright issues here in the UK. Probably uh, could be possible. That was a last minute decision. They said, hey, we're just going to go back to Apple TV. iTV is just not budging. The second thing they said that the Apple TV will get App Store, it will get an App Store, and judging by this coding that you can see, uh, it is possible that um, you know. Well, it isn't possible. It is possible. You know, the App Store, the App Store will come to the Apple TV. What do you guys think? What do you want from an App Store in the Apple TV? Is it something that you want uh, your iPad um, to sort of interact with the Apple TV, or do you want a separate dedicated remote? that's going to get access to Apple TV. I mean, what is it that you want? I'm still unsure um, until I get my hands on the Apple TV to see what it's really like. Um, but it's going to be very interesting the next few months for Apple TV and I can't wait for you know websites and companies like iFixit who tear apart these devices and tell us what's going to be inside them. Um, so yeah, so you know, leave your comments below as to what you think about this. The second bit of story is the Apple LED 27 inch displays are now shipping or at least you can place an order now on the Apple website. Uh, for an all-time low, insert sarcasm here, 999 US dollars, or if you're in the UK, you're going to get raped as usual, 899 UK British pounds, which is a joke. Um, that is, just to put it in perspective, 400 US dollars more in the UK, uh, and that's 260 pound more that you're paying. So if you're in the United States, that is a fantastic price, so it's a great price back in the US. I wouldn't say it's fantastic, it's a good price for an Apple LED display. And I've seen one of these at the, you know, at the Apple stores and they are fantastic. I've not seen this version, but I've seen the previous Apple cinema displays and they are very, very crisp. Uh, so £600 for that, I wouldn't mind. But £900, you can take that money up, you know where. Going to be very interesting to see if anyone actually does buy this. Obviously, there are going to be buyers, professionals, graphic you know, designers and so on that need the Apple LED display because of the colours, resolution, quality, you know, service and so on. But uh, I think I'll stick to Dell if I do need uh, an external display. I can't see myself. I might as well just buy a new iMac for that price or a MacBook. Um, I don't think the price is justified here in the UK. Is it justified in the States? I think it is. But here, I know no. So are you going to be one of the few that are purchasing the new LED displays? You know, Leave a comment below. What do you think about the pricing? I know it's a shambles and you're going to say that. Uh, but just your general thoughts on it. Leave it down below. The third story, uh, and it's a big one, is in relation to the iPad. A lot of iPad stories this week, and one of the first ones is iPad second generation suppliers are getting ready to ship uh, parts out to Apple by quarter, quarter one uh, of 2011. And this is going to be very interesting to see when Apple launched the second generation. 
And I say it's going to be interesting because, as most of you know, the iPad was launched this year in January. It was announced, sorry, in January. It was due to be shipped out in March, end of March. It didn't. Um, United States customers got theirs shipped early April. The UK and four other EU countries got theirs shipped by end of May. So that's already, what, two months down the line. So with a shambles in terms of um, a first launch. So this second generation, what are Apple going to ba base their yearly cycle on? Is it going to be United States? Is it going to be the UK? Is it going to be the date they actually announced the iPad? So the 27th of January is when they announced the iPad. So is that going to be the first um, you know, yearly cycle of the iPad? Is that when we will see... Um, you know, perhaps FaceTime, a camera, more lightweight, better retina display screen. That's obviously what I'm expecting or I'm hoping for at least. Is that, you know, 27th of January? What are your thoughts on it? Uh, I think personally it's going to be about April, April-ish time. Um, just going by the United States. March was the official, that was officially going to be it. I'm going to think it's going to be about April-ish. And the second story in relation to the iPad is that um, Apple has added another supplier for the touch screens in time for the holiday season. Christmas around the corner, a lot of people buying, you know, iPads and devices and stuff as gifts. Makes sense. So what Apple have done is they've asked another supplier to say, hey, build sensors for us, build the screens for us and so on. So that's going to increase the inventory Apple is going to have in stores. So you're most likely to walk into a store and get one rather than going in and coming out with a sad face. The third story is, Apple has today officially launched the iPad in China. Uh, as you can see, there's a queue formed uh, outside the stores, and this guy, um, he's not buying one, but he's buying two, and look at his t-shirt, looks pretty damn awesome. Uh, so he walked out with two, uh, so Chinese uh, people don't have to buy it in the black market, per se, or fake ones. So well done. Six months in the line, you finally have the iPad, and another six months later, a second generation iPad will come out. So, I mean, if you really, really want one, go for it now. You probably won't miss out anything. If you're in a tight, tight budget, and you don't know what to do, hang on. Uh, obviously, I'm not. If you are, if you're desperate for one, you need one, and you're in school and you're college, you need it for lectures, group work, whatever it may be. Buy it now. You won't regret it. If you're short in cash and you can hang on, then hang on, because you will obviously get um, better uh, value for uh, money. Simply because we're six months into this product life cycle, depending on which release date, because we had about 15 release dates uh, for the iPad, depending on which country you were on. Uh, so hang on if you can, is what I'm pretty much trying to say, if you are tight of cash. And this last story in relation to the iPad is quite interesting. The CEO of Best Buy in the United States has said that, you know, the iPad is cannibalizing notebook sales. Note, not netbooks, but notebook sales. That is very interesting. I thought, and a lot of, you know, analysts said that it's obviously going to eat up the netbook market because that's going spec by spec. It was kind of in par with netbooks, although that can be argued, but majority of netbooks um, were slightly similar spec to the iPad and because of the form factor, carry it with you anywhere and so on. So it appealed more with the uh, with the netbooks uh, and iPads, but the notebooks are kind of on a different level, uh, or at least that's the way I see it. Bigger screens, bigger processors, it's a totally different uh, market per se. But Best Buy has said, and a new study as of today has said that the iPad is definitely killing off notebook sales and as you can see from that chart the moment apple released the ipad the number of um, uh, net the notebook um, revenue and sales went down and it went down quite a wee bit so very interesting to see what is going to happen and this is again going back to what steve jobs said in d8 conference where he said that notebooks are going to become like trucks very little or you know not many people are going to use them people just want to sort of this bit he didn't say but i'm going to make up uh, you know, most of the people want to, you know, just open it up, have everything there, apps, internet, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, watch a video, listen to music and so on. Probably don't need video editing like this video that you're watching here. Once I've done it, I'm going to go edit it. I cannot do that on a netbook, nor can I do that on an iPad. No way. I need a full proper MacBook Pro or an iMac so that it renders quickly. I've got all those features, expose and so on, so I'm doing quite a lot of things, dragging pictures here and there, so I can't do that 
on a £400 iPad per se. Um, so going to be very, very interesting. And remember, this is just the US net, no, notebook retail sales. It's not the worldwide one or the UK or the European ones. But I would say the US notebook retail uh, market does count towards quite a lot. Uh, and those numbers are very, very interesting. The next story is a bit of a funny one. Uh, it's in relation to Steve Jobs, and this is what kind of made Gizmodo happy uh, because it was an anti-Steve or an anti-Apple um, story. Basically, Steve Jobs was returning from Japan. He was on a family vacation, and he got stopped by security officials at the airport. They checked his luggage, uh, and they found some throwing stars, presumably for kids, uh, as kids or relatives or so on. Um, Steve Jobs, being the straightforward and uh, right-up guy, he says, that's it, I'm not coming back to Japan. Uh, Apple then declined to comment whether this was a true story or not. Uh, but more recently, All Things Digital confirmed this from Apple, and um, they say that this story is pure fiction. It was made up. Uh, they would say that, even if that was right. But hey, uh, very interesting if anything does develop. The security officials at the airport didn't comment. They just said they stopped someone, but they didn't confirm who it was. So, um, you know, we really don't know if this happened, if it was someone else was involved, if that was the full story. Um, and I guess you guys probably don't know much more than what has come out from these articles, but hey, throwing ninjas. So this next story is quite interesting. Apple have launched an online-based support system called Express Lane. I'm surprised this hasn't been done before, but the way it works is if you own any Apple product or service, you go onto this website, you put your serial number in, and the serial number identifies if you are eligible for warranty status. If you are, it will give you detailed and specific information as to what you should do if you're having trouble. It will give you common questions, you can log a report. It will give you detailed and specific um, numbers to call if you are having or if you want to speak to someone directly. Put you through to the right department. Uh, I'm, again, I'm surprised this hasn't been done before, but I guess the popularity of Apple and so on, they want to make it easy. The number of people that are calling into Apple Care can now probably get most of their problems solved by this than to eat up time at the Genius Bars uh, and Apple Core, Apple, Apple Core, Apple Care support lines. Um, if you happen to have used this recently, because it, it was released the past week, so if you've used it, uh, you know, please leave a comment below just to give everyone an idea of how it was. Did you find it useful? Did you not find it useful? Is it crap? Is it good? Um, but overall, welcomed. And I can actually see myself using this. Apple Care, put this, putting this aside as the number one support service that I've come across to date. Nothing comes close to it. Uh, and this is perhaps icing on the cake. Uh, nice little phrase there. But yeah, what do you guys think? Leave your comments below. And for all two of you professionals who watch my videos, Apple has updated Final Cut Studio. Um, I've never used Final Cut Studio. I want to, but it just seems too difficult for me, and uh, iMovie and ScreenFlow is which what I record with, just do me absolutely fine. But if, uh, it's a 300 megabyte update for those of you professionals, and uh, leave your comments below as to how you're finding it. I believe it's just reliability and few performance updates, f f more features. Um, I'm a bit clueless on the final cut end, so if you could fill me in on that, uh, that would be pretty damn awesome. And if you can pass any links over for absolute dummies for the final cut. And the last but not least is iOS 4.2. I've made a video on this and it's why I kept this to last because it's really not much point of me going over what I've already done. I made a video yesterday as you can see from your right hand side. Click on it and that will give you the full rundown of a full rundown and tour of 4.2 on the iPad. What I like about it, what I don't like about it uh, and it will just give you a feel for uh, what it's like. Have you come across 4.2? What do you think? You know, what are the things that you don't like? The orientation is the one of the things that I hate. And I hope come by, you know, the grand final release or the grand master release, um, they revert back to uh, what it was before. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, click the video on the right-hand side and that will make everything a bit clear. But guys, uh, thanks for tuning in this week. Submit your questions, what you want asked for the next Apple Weekly. Any suggestions? Um... I am coming a bit too late today, uh, the sun is right uh, in front of me, shining ahead. Last week I had an issue of no lighting, this week I have bloody too much lighting. Uh, so guys, yeah, remember you can join me on iglassweegion.com, twitter.com slash i6glassweegion. If you're not already following me on the Facebook fan page, facebook.com slash iglassweegion. And guys, if you could hit the, the magical, the revolutionary subscribe button up there, uh, that would be phenomenal. 
Uh, I'll see you next week for episode 9. Cheers, guys. Thanks. <laughs>